for obvious reasons and for reasons that people don't know about you and Deborah didn't have a good uh, relationship and you didn't think too highly of Deborah over the years. And for those that don't know, she used to be Mongo McMichael's wife. She was in WCW. Then she came to WWE and I guess a short relationship took place between uh, Deborah and Steve and they were married for a brief period. But uh, you had some dealings with her that... Uh, well, I, well, honestly, I didn't know Deborah. I never heard of her. Um, <clears throat> I had no idea. Um, <clears throat> the first I heard of Deborah um, was when Steve and I split. Was her? I saw a jeep and her. She had the ironing board out in the kitchen. So, as I was picking up some of my stuff, I noticed her stuff was in the house that Steve and I were living in. As far as knowing her, I didn't know her at all. Um, um, that I didn't actually think there would be a problem getting along with her, to be honest, only because, um, as you know, I have a daughter with Chris Adams, and and uh, I was very, very, very good friends with his wife, Tony. I was possibly a bit naive, because I probably would have thought that the relationship I had with Chris and Tony and Jade, our daughter, could, could be, you know, if Steve were to pick up the girls, I could say, hi, Deborah, and, and stuff like that. Unfortunately, uh, she did not like me, um, although I would have been really willing to, to work with her. What the problem ended up being between me and Deborah was um, I was living in Dallas, and there, Steve actually phoned me up, and he said to me, there's a show in Fort Worth, a TV taping in Fort Worth, uh, bring the girls. So he asked me to take the girls. He phoned me and asked me. Now, my girls, they, they used to like making the signs, like the signs you hold up. Yeah, that was popular at that time. Yeah, yeah, you know, they had their glitter and they had their glue and their crayons. So about 4 p.m., just a little time before we were going to get in the car and go to the show in Fort Worth, the girls are going to see their dad. Um, Steve phones me back up and he goes, oh, I'm ever so sorry, you know, don't come tonight. And I went, oh, it, here's a problem here because the girls have made their signs and they're excited. Now you're going to make me look like a heel. But I tell you what, I said, I'll bring them to the show. We'll sit in the bleachers. You don't have to see us. I'll tell the girls you've got an injury, whatever but I'm not going to let them down and not take them to the show because that will just break their heart. I go to the show and sat way back in the bleachers. After the show, I'm thinking, okay, fine, we'll go home now. Someone with a T-shirt on, it just had crew written on it, so I didn't know who it was, except it was somebody who worked there. He goes, Jeannie, Jeannie, come here, come on back. And, and I, oh... Steve's changed his mind. He, he's he's going to want to see the girls now. So um, <clears throat> see Paul Heyman, and he goes, Jeannie, come back. So I'm like, okay, great. So Steve must have decided that he's not going to let Deborah tell him he can't see his own kids. <clears throat> so we go back. Steve sees the girls. See uh, Hannah's there, and they see him briefly. But he did look a little quizzed. He looked a bit like, what are you doing here, kind of thing. Come to find out that the people who saw me brought me back, like Paul Heyman and whoever the crew member was, without Steve actually knowing. So anyway, that's fine. The girls see their dad. We're leaving, ready to go to the car. And here comes a woman, like, power walking towards me. It's Deborah. So she grabs Stephanie by the forearm I'll take the girls to see their dad, she said. And I went, no, no, they've already seen him. And I said to her, do you have a problem with me being here with my kids or the kids seeing their dad? And she got right in my face. She said, yes. And I, and I just took Steph's arm away from, from her and, and I left. So when I got home, um, Steve phoned me up and he said he was, he apologized. He said, I'm really sorry. He said that Deborah left him at the arena 
and he had to catch a ride with Hannah to to the airport or the hotel wherever and and that she had taken the keys to the rent car and left the building because I was there with the girls and she had told him to tell me not to come. That's the point there that I didn't think that the relationship of all three of us would work as in um, you have the girls on the weekend and this and that because Deborah wouldn't allow that like Tony and I had a great relationship with with that so that was the point that night I, I can remember sitting on the couch after Steve phoned and apologized and I thought this is not gonna work this because because I signed a Texas order to stay in the States and I was in Texas and I was completely willing to stay in Texas as long as it would it meant that Steve and the girls could see each other but double just wasn't letting that happen so yes there became an issue between us and and a, a couple of other small things like uh, I had to call Steve about tax something to do with our taxes where he paid one year or I paid the other year and sometimes something to do with the girls whether it's something in school or something at a soccer game when I recall I'd say Deborah can I just talk to Steve real quick it's it's important she, she said I told you not to call he click put the phone down so I don't get it how if you're marrying somebody who's got kids how you how you block that relationship with the kids um, because she felt very um, well I don't know jealous or, or threatened but uh, that's where that whole thing didn't work and so I came back to England. Thank you for 